now that we've talked a little bit about the tools that um, I will be using, primarily MySQL Workbench and PHP MyAdmin with Excel coming later in the, uh, in the discussion. So now we're going to um, talk a little bit more about the structure of tables and the importance of that and then we're going to do a few actual SQL queries, some, some easy ones just to start off. And if we have time, hopefully we'll get into uh, some other aspects of uh, SQL, but I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes. Here we've got our schema, and again, you're, you're rarely ever going to find anything like this. But I see I've got this one section here called People, and in that I've got users, um, user address, emails, telephone, um, all this information that you would expect to be from a user, and it links into this area right here, which is addresses, which I guess uh, other tables will access too. Um, and that has your city, state, and um, all that information in there. Now, what you'll find often, there's two things I want you to be very careful here with. Um, one is users with a capital A address. These are very, very particular, and this. Um, tutorial is not going to talk about database uh, creation or structure but you need to be aware of of issues like this and these can very easily get out of hand so you want to be aware of of those kind of issues now the reason that this was designed this way and it's a little over the top is you have here these users well not, why not just put their email their telephone number right in this table right here and the reason is is that this user has a unique username and password and display name um, and that is unique for every user now they can have multiple emails so this person can have three or four emails all tied to that one user same with telephone same with address and that's why they're separated here you don't want users uh, with a blank field where emails for those who don't have emails and you don't want multiple users for each email that a user may have so that is the way this is designed and that's the way it should be now this is a little bit of an overkill here in here we say we have an address with a link to city this what this is saying is I'm going the other way and I'm saying I'm only going to allow cities that are in this table right here well what if there's a Long Beach California and a Long Beach New York which there are um, what's so special about having that? Now, you might want to just have the city in here, but you do want to constrain it by state so that CA is always representative of California. You don't have some people saying CA, some people saying California. That makes a little bit more sense. The city is a little bit of an overkill, um, and maybe you'd have that in a different table with composite primary keys. But anyways, that's kind of the design here. Now, we when we go over to my SQL workbench here. Here we described our auth item child. Um, without getting into any details as to what this is, um, I just want to show some of these things here. Now we have auth item child in our e-commerce database. And it says that there's an ID which is a primary key, meaning that is the only one that can be used and it's uh, and you won't see somebody with the same ID. Those are unique. And then we've got a parent and a child. Well one, one of the things I want to know is where do these go and what do these have um, relationship to? This is where I think PHP admin is actually a little bit easier. If I go to the e-commerce database and I go to the auth item child here, I'm looking at the structure here. And again, I could see the same thing that I could see in the describe, but now I can look at the relationships. And I could see, oh, this parent has a foreign key it links to auth item name as does child so they both link to this auth item name and what this foreign key does is it says that when I insert into parent I can only insert things in that already exist in auth item name and on delete everything will delete so if I delete that auth item name this row will get deleted too Again, this is not part of SQL programming, but a little bit of a database understanding. So let's let, let's look at that. First of all, let's say I want to um, put into this auth item uh, child. Here's my here's my options here. This is the only thing I can choose from because of the way the database is set up. So I'm going to say um, uh, the parent is manage users and the child is user. 
Okay, now when I browse, I can see that I have a parent of manage users and users. Now what happens if I go over to auth items, okay, and I see manage users and I delete it. I've now deleted that and now when I go to auth item child, you can see that there are no entries because both of them used manage users and those were deleted along with it. So that's kind of how it works and you want to see those um, you want to have an understanding of those relationships. Now this, this simple understanding doesn't tell you exactly what the business logic is, but it gives you an idea of what's going on. Now let's say I'm here in MySQL and I want to get that same information. And I'm going to do that with this query here, which I don't use that often. I'll just use phpMyAdmin to see the links. So here the query is I'm, I'm going to use. First of all, I'm saying skip over to the information schema. Uh, database. Now that's again on my server which has multiple databases. This is a database. You can see it right there. I'm going to use that database. I'm going to select all, that's what this asterisk key means, from the key column usage where the reference table is auth item. Okay, So who is referencing the table auth item? And the reference column name is name. So who is using name in the auth item table and I only want to see those in the e-commerce database. So let's go ahead and execute that. Here what we have is we could see now the auth item child table and this other table here, auth assignment table, both reference this auth item name. And in the auth item child table we have child and parent both referencing it. In the auth, um, auth assignment we have item name referencing it. So that kind of gives me an idea of who's referencing what. Again, this is a uh, schema thing that I can maybe get some ideas about um, the logic, but this doesn't really tell me the business logic, but I now can understand the links that are in there. Now, I can absolutely have links that are not foreign keys. Foreign keys um, impose constraints. So those here, we saw those tables right here, those foreign keys imposed constraints, meaning that if I wanted to put something in auth item child, this parent had to exist here. Now I can have, for example, parent and referencing this name, but not have any hard code links, which are what foreign keys are. So those links can still exist in a business logic that don't have a database constraint. The point of putting them in the database is to make sure that the database doesn't get corrupted. Um, the applications that write to and read from the database, really more write to the database, are responsible for that, but the deba database is not going to allow them to do too much damage. And that's a constant battle. Who's responsible for maintaining the integrity of the information, the database or the application? Certainly if you put in a, a bad email address, uh, the database isn't going to know, so the application does have some responsibility. That's a lot of explaining to understand about structures and things like that, but having a basic knowledge of database structures I think is, is important. Here we are back at MySQL Workbench and we're just going to do some SQL queries. We're almost out of time so I won't be able to do anything really complicated. Again, this was just trying to understand business logic and uh, database setup. I can tell you right now in this scening I'm not going to do database administration, creation, adding tables, inserting information. That's not what this tutorial is going to cover. So we're just going to try to get information out. Select is your keyword. That's why it's highlighted in blue and it's something that you're going to use a lot. Select you're going to become really familiar with. Star is a wild card meaning uh, give me everything and I select from what? Well I'm going to go from another keyword and then I'm going to do a table. So that's my statement. Select from users. Now this didn't work and I knew it wasn't going to work. Do you know why it didn't work? I didn't specify what database I wanted to use. Remember, I'm on a server with multiple databases, so I have to dis define the database. Now I could easily, right here in this statement, define the database, and I get my information out. Um, another way to do that is just before I start doing this, I could say use e-commerce. And then I won't have to do that anymore. So I'm just saying from here on out, the database default is e-commerce. And then when I select from users, I get that. I am almost always going to do this because the less writing, the easier it is for me.
So select from users. I've got everything in the user table. Let's look at our schema really diagram here. Users. So we can see here's all the fields in that table and here's all of those fields here. Now just by looking at this I could say that oh ID is the primary key. I, I knew that. Um, I have a username and password which looks like it's encrypted. A display name the date that it was created and the last day it was updated and then a link it looks like to roles ID. I don't know whether this is a foreign key constraint but it looks like it does link to a roles ID table. Okay, So that's our very basic select right here. Um, we're out of time and so we're going to expand on select in the next tutorial.